Can you see my screen? Yes. Much better. Okay. Can you hear? And to the last, is it audible? Uh, yeah, I can hear it. We talk. Okay. Uh, I think we should wait for. Yeah, well, let's wait for a couple of minutes or more. Yeah. Let people gather and then we start. So let me introduce today's speaker, Parth Patua. He's now a you know, scientist at Amazon. He recently joined and recently graduated from UCLA with his master's. And uh, you know, I'm quite proud to say he's my student from IIIT days. We did you know, his bachelor in IIIT and then did master from UCLA. And he has been collaborating with me for many years. And uh, his success is, you know, just being a master student, he has cost, you know, thousand citation mark already in his Google Scholar. So he's a, he's a great student, great researcher, and being very young, achieved a lot of things. So over to you, Parth. Happy to have you. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, uh, thank you very much, Professor, for the generous introduction. And uh, I'd also like uh, to thank Professor Amit Che to uh, invite me for this talk. So uh, today my uh, talk is on the intersection of physics with AI. Uh, and then um, I'll start my talk. So uh, yeah, so I'll be talking on intersection of physics plus AI. And uh, my talk is uh, divided into three uh, separate parts. The first one is to give an overview of what is physics and formed AI and its diverse range of applications. Uh, after providing uh, the applications, like the overview of physics-based uh, ML, I will dive deeper into how uh, physics is being used in computer vision. And finally, I will cover uh, some topics on how is AI being used for physics. So uh, let's uh, start with uh, part one, which is the physics informed ML. Uh, 
uh, what exactly is physics and from AI? So, uh, and what are its uses? So it is uh, when we, there are uh, at a high level, there are two parts, what we can say is physics and ML. One is when we are embedding, sort of the embedding the physics in ML, it could be used to create synthetic data or to uh, guide the loss function to constrain the systems. And uh, uh, like its subtypes would be adding inductive bias, observational bias, or learning bias, which we'll see later. Or uh, physics, in, instead of physics informed, it could be physics inspired AI, where we are just using the concepts of physics to guide uh, physics based, uh, to guide ML models. And why do we need physics informed AI? So it helps model train uh, faster and better. It can help uh, provide some uh, sanity checks on our prediction. And it is especially useful in cases uh, where we have very less real world data. So this graphic uh, uh, from a paper, uh, from a survey paper uh, clearly gives a good picture. Uh, when we have very less data, then we need a lot of physics, like equations and physics-based theoretical models. Whereas if we have a lot of data where we can have a pure uh, data-driven systems, we can just feed the data, which is input and output to a neural network. Uh, and then we may not need physics. But uh, in most cases, we have some amount of data, but not a lot, and that is where uh, we incorporate uh, physics into our networks. So uh, what are the, uh, there are three types of physics informed AI. One is observational bias. It is one of the weakest uh, incorporation where we uh, directly introduce the data which embodies the underlying principle and then use this data to train the ML system. So uh, it could be like we are using multiple sensors like polarization or temperature sensors to capture the data. And then uh, we use a lot of data to train the systems. But in this case, data acquisition can be costly. Then we come to inductive bias, where we have prior and clear assumptions of physics, which can be incorporated into a model. Uh, for example, uh, to ensure that uh, the predictions satisfy a given set of physical laws. But such approaches can be uh, limited uh, uh, when we have a clear uh, knowledge of the physics involved, like and uh, relatively simple, simpler symmetry uh, groups, like we know how translations or permutation work. But uh, most complex implementations are difficult to scale yet it has been successfully in, uh, applied to multiple uh, domains and uh, we'll look into these applications later. And finally, we come to a learning bias, which is sort of a middle ground. So in this, we, are, uh, we have a physics informed loss function or some constraint, uh, which uh, constrain our system uh, to uh, favor convergence towards a solution which adheres to the underlying physics. So it is like a soft penalty constraint where we are using both the loss function from the data as well as from some physics concepts uh, to uh, get approximate solutions. And it is very flexible uh, uh, for a, uh, introducing broad class of physics-based biases uh, in the form of multiple types of equations. So this, as well, we'll see clear examples as we progress to the presentation. Uh, okay, so now uh, that I uh, covered the basics, let's look into uh, clear applications of how uh, physics is being used in NLP. Uh, this is one uh, paper that I'd like to present. Here it's not exactly physics informed ML, but it is physics inspired ML. So uh, we know that transformers are uh, very effective across multiple tasks. 
but they have a large parameters which need to be trained. So the authors, Datta et al., uh, they approximate these calculations, which is the multi-head self-attention and feed-forward transformation with a reduced parameter space and complex computational complexity. And to do this, they uh, make analogous comparisons between transformers and uh, multiple multiple interacting particle system. So uh, a transformer is uh, similar to a temporal uh, evaluation scheme uh, uh, based on multi -party, multiple particle system, which can be used to bypass costly uh, attentions. Uh, so to go deeper into this, uh, uh, fast for faster training of attention layer, we can view it as solving ordinary differential equations over a dynamic system of interacting particles. And uh, simulating particle interactions is similar to executing the successive layer of transformers. Uh, however, in this case, the uh, ith layer has no knowledge of the previous layer. But this is counterintuitive because in temporal evaluation, uh, we need the dependence. So TransEvolve solves that by developing a time evaluation function from the initial uh, condition alone. And let's check what exactly they're doing. So, uh, so this is this may not be very uh, intuitive to a lot of readers, but uh, what they're doing is uh, similar to like executing the next layer of the transformer. Uh, they're modeling it as a time evolving uh, encoder. Uh, which helps us in faster computations of the uh, future layer or attention. And just uh, to prove, they show on, uh, they compare um, the results of this trans-evolved transformer uh, to baselines, and we see that it uh, outperforms um, all the baselines when it comes to translation. Uh, another, uh, so yeah, this one is a paper which I was fortunate to co-author. So in this, what we do is uh, we use uh, inspiration from uh, rotatory, uh, inspiration from electromagnetic waves for code mix language processing. So what exactly is code mix language? It is intermixing of two or more languages in a sentence, uh, which is common in social media, for example, the sentence mixes both English and Hindi. And in this, the switching point is where the language switches. So in our paper, uh, we, uh, we uh, claim that traditional position embeddings are not sufficient uh, to uh, handle the switching points, which is where we come up with a rotatory positional embeddings uh, based on a previous paper, where it is analogous to electric uh, electromagnetic waves and their uh, rotation uh, axis is changing. So to give a visual example, this was our electromagnetic wave uh, propagating. And then we come across a switching point. So that is where the uh, direction of the EM wave changed. And using this uh, intuition and this uh, positional embedding, we see that uh, uh, on machine translation of code mix text, we can clearly see that it outperforms all previous baselines, uh, especially other types of personal encodings. So that was about NLP. Uh, mostly in NLP, it's uh, physics-inspired ML and uh, less of physics-informed ML. Uh, so let's go to the next application, which is physics plus AI in healthcare. It has a very diverse range of applications in blood pressure estimation, heartbeat estimation, cancer detection, and brain uh, health. So to give some examples, uh, this is one interesting problem statement, cuffless blood pressure estimation. So cuffless uh, blood pressure estimation is used where we have variables like watches, and the watches are predicting the uh, are correctly estimating the blood pressure of the person. 
and they use uh, physiological data uh, like electric waves to estimate the blood pressure. But a direct uh, translation between the physiological data to uh, accurate blood pressure is uh, not feasible because we need a huge amount of ground truth data, which is especially uh, expensive to collect, especially at a personal level. So this paper, uh, they train a physics-inspired in neural network model by using Taylor's approximation to uh, gradually uh, change the known relationship between input and output. And we uh, incorporate this approximation in the neural network training. So this is how it is done. Uh, we have the input, uh, which is the sensor data, and that is given to a uh, traditional uh, uh, fully connected neural network. And this is exactly where the physics is being incorporated. So if there were only the conventional supervised loss function, then we would need a huge amount of data. So that is where they have a physics-based model, which is through a physics-based loss of Taylor series approximation, and the uh, both the models are jointly being optimized. And this, so, uh, so based on the results, it's clear that this physics and spread neural network, um, it uh, it outperforms traditional CNNs. Uh, similarly, this is uh, another uh, application, uh, heartbeat detection from facial videos. So this also, I was fortunate enough to co-author a paper on this. Uh, why we need heartbeat detection from facial videos, especially for telemedicine in cases like pandemic or when it is expensive to go to a doctor. Uh, but uh, the data sets for that are limited because they need a lot, huge amount of uh, paired data, as well as their the data sets, current, most of the existing data sets are unfortunately not inclusive of the diverse population uh, when it comes to skin tones. So we propose a biorealistic uh, synthetic uh, data generation GAN. So in this, we use... Uh, concepts from uh, biophysics uh, to uh, generate physiorealistic or more like biorealistic synthetic data so that we have a lot, huge amount of data and we can uh, better train the model. And this uh, uh, not only reduces the racial bias, but we also saw that across data sets, across all skin tones, it improved state-of-the-art performance. So uh, the what GAN does is we have an input image and we have a random PPG wave. PPG is like the heartbeat wave. And we are modulating this heartbeat wave on the on a video of a person. Uh, so we use a traditional uh, 3D mesh algorithm to generate random motion. So to generate simply a video from this image. And then we use uh, bio decomposition of the facial features to modulate the uh, RPPG onto the video. And as a result, we have a synthetic video, which is also by, uh, realistic. Uh, one quick note is this can be potentially misused, but we strongly suggest not to do that. And finally, this is what the uh, results were. So we see that when we combine the real and synthetic data, uh, the performance was better across all the skin tones, which is like uh, FP is the skin tone from the uh, lightest to the darkest, as well as overall. So we uh, obviously we show that we create a bi uh, realistic GAN, but we also show that including the minority classes uh, enhances the performance for everyone. And we use state of the art uh, models, we just change the data. So, uh, yeah, and a couple other uh, similar applications would be uh, cancer detection, where again, they are, uh, when with this paper, uh, they are using a physics informed neural network uh, to modify the loss, and they get much better and faster results to uh, predict some uh, uh, estimators which are used uh, for estimating cancer.
And one more last but not the least application of this is uh, to predict the uh, flow of blood in the brain, which is obviously very useful to get brain health. And existing uh, clinical methods are limited to very few locations in the brain, uh, but a paper, uh, this paper, they propose a physics-inspired neural network uh, to augment uh, yeah, complex architecture, but they basically use uh, losses from physics to uh, better create uh, these simulations. And yes, same, the results are really uh, better or similar to ground, uh, similar to traditional methods. Um, okay, uh, now I'd uh, like to move to uh, uh, autonomous vehicles. And uh, so in autonomous vehicles, one uh, problem statement in autonomous vehicles is car following, where we need where our vehicle needs to follow the car in front at a safe distance. For example, in most cars, there is adaptive cruise control. And it has been studied through physics-based model where the input is the velocity, difference in velocity and the positions. And we have to get the uh, acceleration of the cars. But again, a very similar issue is that, uh, so in this case, the issue is that the traditional methods uh, they are not uh, complex enough to uh, model the real world. So, which is where we need to uh, add the deep learning part of it uh, to model uh, for solving car following. So, uh, this paper, uh, Mo et al., they use a physics based dynamic uh, simulation. Um, uh, using uh, the traditional mathematical uh, uh, models like ordinary differential equations and um, and uh, the yeah the common uh, physics models like intelligent driver model and optical velocity model which it's not necessary to know what exactly what they do but they are common for the physical methods and uh, they use RNNs and LSTMs, uh, which is intuitive here because we have a sequential data. And so uh, what the paper tries to do is we have this uh, physics uninformed neural network, and we have a physics model, which is also being calibrated as we see the data. And we output the uh, acceleration based on the physics model, based on the neural network and the observed one. Then the loss combines both the traditional loss function as well as a physics-based loss function. And again, uh, the uh, number of training data samples. So here we see that as the data increases, as traditional neural network will work very well. But if we have in a data scarce setting, then we see that the physics-informed uh, model, it performs much better. So yeah, the number of training data, if it's fewer, let's say if it is just uh, 100 samples, 520, then the, we clearly see the gap. Uh, similarly, uh, uh, another app uh, use cases like autonomous racing, where we have to model how the car would behave at very high speeds, which is like greater than 250 kilometers per hour. And uh, pure uh, models did pure deep learning models do not generalize well. So this paper introduces a physical and um, physics and form neural network uh, uh, where they take a previous uh, pure deep learning method and then they uh, introduce some physics guards uh, to ensure that uh, some constraints, some basic sanity checks are uh, implemented or satisfied. And then uh, again, they have this physics guard, which ensures that the prediction is within an acceptable range and they get uh, the errors uh, with the physics inspired uh, model are much lower than other models, other state of the art models. So uh, that was about autonomous vehicles. Now this is an important, uh, very useful uh, application of physics where we 
uh, so we previously as well saw that uh, the data real world data can be scarce and we need some synthetic data to retrain our model but uh, uh, this but this pre, uh, synthetic data needs to be quite accurate so uh, so one such uh, tool to create physically accurate data is uh, Mitsuba, uh, where it is sort of an it is an image renderer and it stimulates accurate images uh, where you can also vary the opti optical features of the objects. For example, you can change the material light and then uh, this data is used to retain a neural network. To give an actual example. So this image, uh, no, notice the shadow and the color of the light the position of the shadow. So this is purely generated by the Mitsuba renderer. And then it can also be used to modify the light source, position, color. And uh, the best, one of the uh, most important feature of Mitsuba is it has other uh, aspects like this is polarized image, uh, polarization image. So it tells us the intensity and the ULP and DLP of the, basically the angle of linear polarization of the image, a purely a generated image. And uh, another, uh, so yeah. Uh, so Carla is another such uh, physics-based renderer. Uh, uh, is, I'll just play their video directly taken from their website. Uh, I hope the, uh, so is the uh, video visible or not a bit? Uh, sir, is the video uh, visible? Yes. The video is visible, but it's not audible. It's just background music. But basically, entire scene, whatever you see, is purely generated by this Carla tool. And you can observe the nuances like the shadow and uh, the acceleration of the cars. So I think you, I think this should be enough to get an understanding that the entire scenes are uh, very elaborate and accurate scenes are generated using Carla. And um, so, yeah, so we can go to the next slide. So we saw how accurate it was. And then this features are like it has multiple sensors, uh, map generation, traffic simulation, and so on. And obviously, it is used for autonomous vehicles. So this table shows. Uh, so this is to check which autonomous vehicle method is the best, where they check three methods all on the simulated data. And then uh, you can do similar experiments to check which autonomous vehicle method is the best to actually deploy on your real world car. Another uh, example that I'll quickly cover, uh, but very similar is uh, to create uh, cardiac MR images. Uh, so where we have a simulated uh, this is another common method to bridge the domain gap. So there is some method to create simulated data, but it is not very accurate. So that's why we uh, initially train a GAN on a, a pair of real and simulated data to get better simulated data. And this is used to uh, bridge the domain gap between the real and the synthetic data. And here we see that the simulated uh, data is much uh, better uh, than the previous methods. So, uh, so yeah, uh, this is uh, just to recap, uh, synthetic data generation is a very vast and huge use case of physics-based models, and it significantly helps train uh, neural network models better. Uh, yeah, so in the interest of time, I'll uh, quickly go over the uh, other use cases. In robotics, it is uh, used to predict the uh, motion of humans. And uh, very similar, uh, the paper is 
incorporating uh, physics based models to get accurate estimation of how a human moves and other some other um, examples are like drug discovery which is also a uh, field uh, heavily uh, focused on traditional methods uh, so in drug discovery uh, there is something known as scoring function which is essential uh, to find out but existing me methods are usually uh, purely a regression or statistics based which are not as good so this uh, one paper they incorporate physics uh, some yeah a lot of concepts to get good uh, scoring functions um, and yeah and there's many other applications so it could be to predict the flow of water and it could be to predict uh, the energy uh, wind power energy prediction it could be for geology to uh, check the temperature pressure and permeability at the depth and and there's many many uses so uh, this presentation is not enough and this is definitely not an exhaustive list but the intention here was to give an overview of how physics and uh, inspired neural networks are uh, being used. Other use cases could be in object detection, image denoising, civil engineering, neural architecture search, and countless other applications. So to conclude, uh, we saw that uh, physics inspired neural networks can offer either observational, inductive, or learning bias. Uh, they can also be inspired from physics. And neural networks can also be just purely inspired from physics concepts. And these PINNs are applied to a wide, wide range of problems and fields quite successfully. So yeah, uh, I would like to acknowledge my collaborators, guides, and uh, friends. And so this was first part of my presentation. Uh, any quick questions? If not, I can move to the next part. So, okay. So now we saw that, yes, physics inspired neural networks are being applied to a, a lot of fields, but let's dive deeper into how exactly to incorporate physics uh, specifically in computer vision. And why does it make sense? Because CV, Inherently, computer vision relates to physics because it infers pro properties from the physical world, like the shape or the uh, position and so on. And there is, which is, which clearly motivates a close relationship between physics and computer vision. Uh, so the, so there is this emerging trend of in integrating physics into computer vision. And uh, this, uh, this presentation is the, based on the paper by uh, Achyuta Kadambi, which also talks about the same topic. So, yeah. Uh, okay, so what are data-driven models? Uh, previous, in recently, data-driven models have become more popular as our computation has increased. And data-driven models are pure deep learning models uh, where we have a lot of uh, data uh, and we just directly give a neural network the input and the output without any knowledge of the world and expect that it will predict very well. And this has worked actually quite well in many cases like facial recognition and um, uh, like uh, cat and dog prediction and so on. Uh, because we, are, we now have more data than we ever had and we have strong computers. But uh, there is, it, the pure data-driven model come with some problems because the neural networks may generate prediction which are uh, physically very unlikely. Uh, if you might have seen, there are some uh, computer-generated faces which have um, weird eyes or nose at the wrong place. And uh, Data-driven models, they lack constraints and they are uh, hard to generalize because there are no uh, theoretical bounds. 
So what, the solution is merging both physics and data-driven models. So it's worth exploring a combination where physics offer, offers some interpretable steps and some uh, guarantees, which helps us generalize uh, to newer data. And uh, data-driven models in turn can uh, help with uh, viable predictions, which a physical model uh, cannot handle. So now the how to in, so now we know now this motivates that there might be a need to integrate it, but how to integrate both? So there is no clear answer. Uh, there are multi -way, multiple ways to incorporate physics, uh, which into neural networks, which we'll see as we progress. So this is an overview, uh, very similar to what we previously discussed. Uh, when it we are in a toy world and we have small uh, data we can use purely uh, knowledge from physics and we when we have a lot of data and uh, complex systems then we can use knowledge from data but it does not generalize well so this is why we this is where we use both of them and the bias for uh, physics can come from design laws data driven and so on so yes so that's is what physics-based learning is. It is incorporating physics in pipelines for computer vision. And it so it can be applied to motion prediction, uh, de-weathering, and it can come from creating synthetic data, network design, and loss function. Let's check deeper. Uh, let's define this further. So yes, uh, again, I repeat that a hybrid approach uh, where we fuse physical laws with data as physics-based machine learning. And now we define it. Now let's see when to use it. So if the uh, if it is a very simple, relatively a toy problem, or if the demands are clearly satisfied with physics alone, then we should just use physics. And if the problem has very little relation to physics, then we can use with data alone. But Many most of the problems they lie somewhere in the middle. Uh, so and uh, where the physical models are not exact uh, and uh, but still useful. So that is where we use physics based machine learning. Uh, advantage is that it uh, makes uh, models both physically and scientifically consistent. Uh, training becomes data efficient where we want uh, where we need much lesser data. Uh, we the training becomes faster, there is lesser fewer hallucinations, and the model generalizes well. Uh, so yeah, uh, so the choice of using physics-based learning, it depends on the quality of the physics and data, and there are some important considerations to make. These are the three considerations we need to make before deciding to use physics-based learning. We need to check the goodness of the data, goodness of the physics, and how easy it is to integrate both of them together. Uh, to expand further, uh, goodness of the data, it can be uh, assessed through uh, metrics of task performance uh, using pure data-driven approach, and then compare it to goodness of physics by assessing same uh, performance on physics alone. So here we can, we might observe that uh, both the approaches have different types of error, such as data-driven models can be hallucination, hallucinating, uh, uh, and uh, or it captures some uh, details not covered by the physics-based model. So, uh, and another important, so we consider, uh, so I talked about integrating physics. So the uh, physics model should be tractable. So let's take one concrete scenario where we have a, a deep learning based uh, stereo method and it does not recur fine, uh, a physics based uh, model does not capture all the uh, nuances whereas a data driven model uh, tends to hallucinate. So this is where 
we see that both the physics and the uh, data approaches have different behaviors, which is a good motivation that we might need to fuse uh, physics and ML. But uh, in another case is where we uh, incorporate physics, where we have to prune some unreasonable solutions. So this is where we know that it is possible. But other thing to think of is how easy is it to integrate? So if we are using some loss function from physics, for most neural networks, it should be uh, differentiable to uh, have a stable training. Uh, now, assuming that uh, we uh, want to incorporate physics in our pipelines, uh, yeah, so there are three methods. Uh, we can incorporate physics in the data sets, which leads to observational bias. We can uh, incorporate physics in neural networks leading to inductive bias. And we can incorporate in uh, loss function leading to learning bias. Uh, leading to learning bias. Um, this was uh, previously as well covered, like how we are incorporating physics and uh, AI data sets. So we are creating synthetic data sets, which adhere to some physics principles, and they may not be sufficient, but they're uh, good enough to give some pre-training to the uh, model. So this could be a synthetic data to detect humans, and it it is uh, useful, uh, but we also use some real world data to get in all the nuances. Um, so yeah, so there are uh, some examples where, so this paper, for example, uses uh, synthetic data with physics concepts. And the important aspect here is the synthetic data should be uh, as accurate as possible uh, and uh, domain gap is one big problem of uh, having synthetic data. So many techniques like randomization and uh, perturbations have been used to improve the uh, generation and uh, generalization of synthetic data. And this is also where physics is helpful, where we have uh, more realistic synthetic data. Uh, for example, uh, ray tracing, uh, have been used to uh, optimize scene parameters or uh, based on visual inputs, uh, where ray tracing is a, a physics phenomenon. So yeah, to summarize this part, uh, data sets can be simulated using known laws, and uh, AI models will have inductive bias, uh, uh, will be biased using observational bias, but uh, there will be a domain gap, which must be minimized. Now the second method is inductive bias where we are incorporating physics and uh, network architectures. That can be done in two methods, residual physics and physical fusion. So in uh, residual physics, um, we use deep learning to learn uh, null space of what physics cannot predict. So uh, for example, a trivial solution could be given video frames uh, predict the trajectories, but it is susceptible to inaccuracies. So we create some sort of skip connection between physics model and neural network, uh, where we have uh, physical prior and the data driven, uh, both of them fusing to, uh, together to form a final output. One use case of this is tossing bot, where a bot was uh, taught to toss unstructured objects into target boxes. And, uh, they used a uh, physics-based controller along with the RGB uh, data. And then it is both the modalities are fused to get the actual score. And uh, they show that it is useful and uh, residual physics model performed the best. But uh, residual physics may not be good enough. There is another approach where we have physical uh, fusion, where we provide physics as an input feature. So it's more like a multimodal fusion. Uh, we have this RGB and uh, another physical information that could be polarization or LIDAR. And then we are fusing it in a pure neural network. 
One accurate example would be shape from polarization, where we are using physical priors on the input image. Uh, both are given as inputs to a uh, neural network to get the uh, uh, shape. Uh, another similar use would be to detect transparent objects, where we have the pure RGB, as well as the physics uh, data, which is like polarization, to detect transparent objects. So for example, in this ground truth, uh, these three transparent so-called objects that you see are actually uh, flat 2D photos based on a table. And the simple pure RGB model uh, uh, give, leads to false positives, whereas using the uh, polarization uh, cues, it helps us uh, uh, say that, okay, that they were photos and not actual 3D transparent objects. So yeah, to summarize, there are there are the two common choices, and it uh, depends on the relevance of the model. Finally, uh, we come to uh, incorporating physics and loss functions, which we saw previously as well. Uh, so uh, the loss functions are usually inspired by well-defined physical priors. And the priors are domain specific, but the importance is that the important thing to note is that the loss functions need to be differentiable for us to have uh, gradient-based learning like back propagation. So this is an overview of loss-based functions. And we saw some examples in the previous part as well, where we have some uh, traditional loss and a physics-based loss to guide the model training. It has been used for image dehazing or denoising uh, in human pose detection and uh, so on, uh, where so they use um, concepts from physics uh, to uh, for the optimization to get the actual final pose of the human. And to summarize, loss functions can be used uh, to regularize a model or to have some constraints, uh, but uh, the Loss function either needs to be differentiable or we need some approximate physical loss function. And uh, so, yeah, uh, the future would be that uh, we might not have sufficient uh, knowledge of either uh, physical loss or the parameters where we need to find out physical loss from data. So, the future could be to uh, find out, discover unknown physics laws purely from the data. And uh, another uh, future could be like shift towards neural networks, which uh, uh, emulate learning mechanisms of bio biological systems, like bio-inspired neural networks. And finally, it seems uh, we can, uh, it would be interesting to see how physics incorporates in uh, decent large language models. So to conclude, uh, we divide physics-based learning in three categories and look, each, uh, look at each of them. And uh, this physics-based learning provides a path to integrate critical knowledge for many domains. And it also opens doors to for novel learning paradigms. So yes, uh, this was second part where I covered physics and computer vision. Any questions? Okay, and my final part of the presentation, it's relatively shorter, is we so far saw how AI is, physics is being used in AI. We took a deep dive on computer vision. Now we flip the scenario where we are showing how is AI being used for physics. So uh, AI can be used uh, for physics and uh, one survey paper divides it into three categories where AI is used for data analysis, model, modeling, and model analysis. Data analysis could be we have a lot of scientific data and we need to uh, detect patterns in that. So uh, it could be to uh, uh, search for uh, signals of gravitational lensing or uh, to create a black hole image from data. So this was an image of black hole uh, created purely from data. And similarly, in particle physics, we 
would have the uh, lot of data from the large hadron collider and we use machine learning to uh, flag interesting events in that uh, other uh, uses modeling where uh, for example we are using machine learning to simulate the formation of galaxies which in traditional met methods uh, takes uh, supercomputers and is not feasible so uh, researchers used machine learning based techniques to successfully match the amount of dark matter to the amount of visible matter in galaxies which otherwise would have needed supercomputers and finally model analysis is where we are using machine learning to understand or evaluate a physics based model of some concept Uh, for example, there could be a model for atomic structure, but many co calculations are needed to operationalize the theory or to formalize the theory, and they are uh, too vast to uh, do with the existing computational resources. So that is where we can use model analysis. Uh, and to uh, give actual real-world uh, applications, it has been used in particle uh, physics uh, to analyze the data of large hadron collider, as I said. Uh, it is used in uh, statistical physics, uh, where uh, the famous Bose-Einstein condensate experiment, which was uh, which won the Nobel uh, Prize, was redone by AI uh, in less than one hour. Uh, in astrophysics, it is being used to detect gravitational waves uh, it is being used in uh, nuclear physics to identify electrons and determine uh, heavy quarks and quantum mechanics where neural networks are capable of representing ground state wave functions. Uh, another interesting application is solar flame. So uh, solar flame, it is an intense radiation of electromagnetic waves from the sun, which if when solar flame happens, uh, when a solar flare happens, it leads to a disruption of telecommunication and real world challenges. So uh, researchers created a deep learning network using LSTM to predict whether the next solar flare, uh, flare will it be strong, medium or low. And LSTM is uh, like intuitive to use here because it is a time series data uh, where we have the input features of the sun as a time series, and it predicts how strong the solar flare will be. Uh, and yes, uh, and a couple other examples will be, this uh, This one was quite famous where ML was used to enhance the image of a, a black hole. So this was the original image, and this was the one enhanced with a, a ML-based algorithm. Uh, yeah, one, uh, just a couple more things. Uh, it, I mean, just to uh, give another example, it is being used to detect exoplanets, uh, to detect uh, supernovas. And finally, one of my favorite applications is uh, uh, we can use AI for learning laws of motion from videos. So the paper uh, used AI to detect mechanical laws of motion, like simple projectile motion and velocities, uh, where the input was a video and you use air to output equations. Now this paper, they uh, learned just the laws that we already know. But the main point is similar methods we can use on a lot of data to discover new laws, uh, which yeah, to discover new laws which haven't, which we are not aware of. So that is one future use of AI for uh, physics. And yes, so finally, this was just a brief overview of how AI is being used in physics. And uh, it has been applied to a wide variety successfully to speed up research and applications. One point to note is these, uh, Examples that I gave are not exhaustive and uh, it is not uh, like I didn't cover a lot of them in detail, 
but I encourage you to go and read about each of these algorithms or applications in detail. Uh, yeah, uh, I'd like to acknowledge all my guides, colleagues, friends who have helped me in this slides. That is all about my talk. Uh, thank you for your patience and thank you for listening. Uh, if any questions, please, please ask. Any questions? Yes. I'm looking at them. So if there's a question. Uh, sorry, uh, can you repeat, please? No, I'm just you know looking at the class and trying to see, you know, whether they have any question. Okay. So I have an interesting discussion too. <clears throat> so you have seen a video of Sora came out. There's a chair coming out from sand. You have seen that, and there are a lot of discussion. That visual, you know, machines are, you know, hallucinating, etc. I just sent you the link of the video over LinkedIn. So, yes, if, if laws could be learned uh, from such, you know, output and how it could be, you know, so any comment on that? I mean, if you can, you can play the video if you can find out. I just sent uh, you LinkedIn chat. Okay, sir. I'll play it right now. And yes, so that is an interesting push case. Uh, and I can talk about because that. Because with this text to video models will be more popular in coming years. So this yes. you know, question of learning the physical law is very important. Yes, sir. And uh, okay, I'll I'll present my screen. Yes. Yeah. It is the video, no audio. No, audio. no audio. This is the solar solar generated video. Yes, sir. And I can see there's a problem while the see the chair is now flying. Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. This is a common uh, problem with such pure data driven models, which we also discussed. And if you see Carla, for example, uh, Uh, so Carla, if you see, for example, they generate very uh, high fidelity, accurate uh, images. So because they are using all the uh, physics models to uh, create, like if you compare Sora with Carla, you can clearly see like very high level of details and you don't see any such hallucinations here. So both are extreme ends where one is pure data driven and other one is pure physics driven. But we could maybe have a combination of both to uh, reduce the hallucination. And one thing I can think of is simply to have a loss function to ensure, uh, like we have a physics model which shows that a chair cannot fly unless there is some external force on it. And this can be designed as a loss function uh, and incorporated in the learning. Right. Any further comment question? If not, thank you, part then. Nice talk, very detailed. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Pat. Bye. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm just wondering what the class of this is.